Welcome back to PJ Chen Design. This is PJ. Have you ever dreamed about your model to be smooth all the way without any kink? Today, I would like to show you a little trick with the Rhino Subdi tool to make your model seamless on the surface for your jewelry cat design. Are you ready? Let's get started. So in this organic uh, bangle, video i was talking about how to use the mesh and use a smooth command and you can get into some sort of a smoothness but if you zoom in to check on it uh, and let's go ahead to using the ghost view you're going to see some of the area if you zoom in so much you can still see this edges there and some of them if you use a reduce the smoothness if you use a smooth command and reduce the polygon too much and you will get this actually really uh, sharp angle and because they are small so it's not hard it's not easy to tell unless you're zooming so much now with the rhino 7 new function that we have this uh, piping tool it give you really smooth surface and you can keep even keep editing once you are done so for example let's say i'm going to select all three of them right here and it actually make this one a little bit bumpy we can still doing that but it will continue to smooth out with all the neighbors so i would like to show you how actually we can do this really quick by using the file that we have from this bango all right, so back to this file and um, again, I will list the video on the right top corner. If you want to check out how did I make that first one, you are welcome to check that video. But let's go to the top view and take a look on this things right here. So basically what we did last time was piping and then we bowling union and then we do uh, turn them into the mesh and reduce the mesh to make them puffier. So now what I wanted to do is using the sub tool for piping. So let me explain to you what that is. A lot of time when we are doing the piping and then let's say I'm going to creating a curve go like this way like this and going like this way like this and also going another way like this for example and then to do this piping in the regular rhino sense then you will have the pipe so let's say i'm going to pipe all of all of them at once and then i'm gonna do radius for two and then we'll get something like this and after that we will need to bowling union them and a lot of time bowling union might fail is because they are the same diameter so what we need to do is we try to even uh, move it around to make the seam is not overlapping especially on the head over there let's try bowling union one more time and then you got something like that then you have to smooth this out in order to get a better look right and when it coming when they're coming with all the pipe coming in together, it's hard to get a smooth look. So if we take a render and you're going to see the hard pipe over there. So I'm going to move in this one to the side for the comparison. Now what I like to do for the Rhino 7 sub D, uh, you have a, a function here. It's called sub D multi pipe. So you can pipe multiple at the same time and then they will blend it together really well. But first of all, we need to turn in this curve into the sub D curve. And um, in my course, I'm going to explain what's the difference, but you can come in into this icon and make curve sub D friendly. So once it turning into a sub D friendly, um, it will change the shape a little bit. So what we wanted to do is we want to turn, uh, we want to turn on this control point and we actually need to move all the point you know touching each other the end will touching near and touching each other or something like this all right so once we have that uh, we are going to use instead of pipe we're going to use sub d multi pipe and then uh, i'm going to set up the same diameter for two and then you hit enter you're going to have this uh, 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 subdivision for set it for, from zero to one and i like to go with the zero because it's smoother and look, you got it beautifully, beautifully piping. Uh, if we take a render view like this, it's really smooth compared to this one, 
right? So they are coming out from the same curve. So with the same principle, what we wanted to do with this curve is we're going to pick up everybody. And we want to turn them into the sub D friendly, right? Or you can try to rebuild because you turn it into a sub D friendly, then you're going to see this is a lot of a point that is not touching each other. So what if we try rebuild this? So for the rebuild, I'm going to pick up all the short section first. And let me go back with the ghost view. So we turn on all the uh, short section first, and then we want to rebuild them. So when we rebuild, um, we can make them last point count. Let's make them into 10 point count. Um, it will shift a little bit. And then we want to make sure that make sub the friendly is on. So let's click OK. And then they will stay as close as possible uh, instead of just turn them into a sub the friendly. And we also need to rebuild this one. Because this one gonna have a lot more point, and I'm going to stay maybe 200 point. I'm going to stay maybe 200 point and see if it's match really well, and then let's click OK. So next things we wanted to do is we need to make sure all the point at the end is touching the edge. If it's not touching. And why is this crucial? Let me move this on the side. If this is not touching like this or having cross and this is what you're going to get. You get pipe radius for two and then you select everything. It's not going to connect together and then you will have a uh, a dipping over there. So touching the curve is super important. So we're going to spend some time here and go through on the every end. And sometimes if they look really close but not, what I like to do is move them out a little bit and coming back and make sure near point is on. Uh, because any single of them, if it's not touching, um, you won't get a really smooth result. So let's do something like that. I'm going to fast forward here so you don't have to do, uh, see me do, you know, spend a lot of time doing this. But for you, I would suggest you definitely need to uh, make sure every point is touching. And um, I also like to suggest you go from the left to the right because you change one thing uh, randomly, the other things. Uh, like if you're changing this point, the middle point may not touch again. So you want to make sure that um, they are all touching. All right, so once you're done, let's do a test. Um, we are going to select everybody right here and then uh, this two short one. And we're just going to use the sub D multi pipe. The piping radius, I'm going to set it up for 1.2. Uh, the cap is on. And then we want to set it to the zero. So you will get it really smooth. Now, notice that this uh, a, a chunk is missing. I'm going to put a point there to remind me where they are. So we're going to need to examine. You see like this one is tucking into the other one. The problem is this not touching over there. So we kind of examine them. Uh, and this one is folding each other. Maybe there's a kink over there. So we're going to take a look again. Um, and also this one is not touching. And maybe I should change to the black color. It's easier for you to see. All right, so that's much easier. And you can see a lot of them, the transition is really nice. I try to be avoid to get this really sharp corner. So I'm, I may want to take a look on that one as well. All right, so everything else looks really nice. Or maybe there's a kink over there. I want to make sure that it's not kinky there. All right, so now we have everything done. Let's go ahead to delete this pipe and let's go back to take a look. See, this one wasn't really touching. All right, so we want to 
again moving this point back to this point and delete that so kind of give it us a hint and this one is coming in a little bit too much since this is more of the organic design so i just need to make sure that uh, they are working um, they don't have to follow the original design because it's more like an organic shape so i want to do something like that delete this point and take a look on this one yeah this one is not touching so yeah it might feel like it takes some time to moving all those points but it's better to have a smooth surface uh, in this way and it's just another way I mean you can still using the uh, the old way that we have and again this is the new function the sub D is the new function in the Rhino 7 and a lot of uh, um, follower and all the subscriber ask me is it worth to get rhino 7 and i'll be honest with you it is definitely worth um if you are using just uh ask me like is it worth to change rhino 5 to rhino 6 uh, i might say maybe or maybe not right because uh, for the jury application it's really not much of a difference but if you say it is is it worth to update to Rhino 7 just for the sub D function? Yes, it definitely is worth it. As you can see, if you can get something like this really quick and really smooth, it does worth uh, your time like hourly to try to make them look nice. Okay, so let's take a look one more time. All of them now it look nicer and things like that right so the next thing what we need to do just bend them into the bango but today i just like to show you you know the differences compared to the last video about organic bango and the powerful tool for using the sub d tool for multi-piping how do you like this sub d multi-pipe command I personally enjoy it and use a lot into my jewelry care design. I hope you will like it too. If you want to learn more about the Rhino Sub-D, I do have a course of specific design using Rhino 3D Sub-D tool to create jewelry care design. That will help you to create a lot of organic shape into your custom jewelry. Check out at the link below to see more course detail. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.